I remember my master used to say, we used to touch his feet, prostrate, we lie down. So he says, you won't get anything touching my feet. I'm a useless guy. But what he said, the words that I speak to you can transform you. Touching my feet, offering a gift, donation is not going to help you. Yes, it help you in your in your worldly life. You know that you have an opportunity to understand your mind through these acts. So the words that coming from the Eastern wisdom for the last 6,000 years are useful. They can change. And the world contains the knowledge. The world contains the knowledge. That is our 16th step. First 15 steps are nothing but the preparation on the path. But even when you are following those 15 steps, there are there is bound to bound it is you no know, you will find lot of changes in our attitude, in our behavior, in our responses to the world outside, in our family life, in our social life, in our professional life. The foundation, you can say, is the cause of, to come to the 16th step. 16th step means learn the principles of Eastern wisdom. And there is a specific way to learn it. If you have completed all the 15 steps, you have a fair understanding. Then listening... These principles, listening these principles can lead to a greater discovery in you. What is very important is the fourfold practices. The first clear understanding of the self and the non-self. What is my real self and what is not the real self. Second is, you see that there are two parts, knowing and doing. So knowing the self and the non-self and then doing it, living that kind of a life huh? in your profession, at the social level, at the personal level, brings about a tremendous change in the mind. We have already discussed Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Dhyana Yoga and the Raj Yoga. All these are covered under 15 steps. Now, uh, listening and reading, listening, the teacher about these principles of Eastern wisdom is known as Shravan. Ah, what a big deal listening. I have the ears. I can listen. <laughs> I can listen to anything. And that's what I have been doing. What a big deal. So the master says it is not chatting over a cup of tea. It is not a discourse. It is not talking casually. It is not a discussion with agreements and disagreements. Or likes and dislikes. This step is the, I would say, is a big milestone in the journey. Or you have been tolerating the teacher in the last 15 steps. Huh? It gives you an endurance to listen. <laughs> so that is why the master has put, it is the 16th step. Now, say for example, you are in a physics class and the teacher is teaching matter is all about physics 
do you see the multiple matters with the different colors and the shades and the qualities and the physical and the and the chemical properties of a matter that whatever we see outside it is an effect now the master teaches you they are all made up of an atom so atom is the cause of the entire material world isn't it that is how we study physics so then the teacher doesn't stop there he says what is the cause of that matter the particles some particles are moving around the nucleus there is a neutron there is a proton there no but what are what is the cause of that particles the cause of that particles is what we understand nowadays in the quantum physics it is all electromagnetic waves but what is this this is an energy what is this energy the capacity of doing the work so the entire journey of shravan 16 step is to leave the effect go to the cause and reach to the ultimate cause of this entire universe my existence my problems and my suffering do you see you have a fight with your spouse so you say he or she is responsible we don't find the cause we don't withdraw the mind within at least how my mind has created this effect that is very important and we don't we overlook that that is what master guides it but how it has to do with my life it has to do everything with my life shravan or hearing the 16 step is a step by step learning in a systematic and organized study of the principles of the eastern wisdom what are the couple of topics who am i so we start going from the effect to the cause you are a sergi you are a human being but that is outside that is a label given so what exactly is the human being I'll just take an example so i explain in a different way human plus being that is what the human being is so what is the human part the human part is constantly changing so what are those parts which are constantly changing body mind breath intellect ego are constantly changing and what is that being it is the state of the being which is present at the center that is pure consciousness if the pure consciousness is not present in the human no life we are gone one way to study so we focus on clarity and understanding who am i what is the world what is the existence what is bondage what is limitation what exactly when you say what is tension so we explain the eastern wisdom explains beautifully what exactly is the stress what is the point of the stress what is the cause of the stress that is one approach and every teacher has every masters in the past had their own approach what is freedom what is sadhana so organized and systematic study step by step look at the yoga sutra the patanjali the entire yoga sutra it contains how much uh, 195 formulas yeah jerry 195 formulas that 195 formulas or jip file explains everything what is mind what is the structure of the mind what is the function of the mind how the mind I didn't understand that 
how the mind leads us to stress and suffering what are the subjective states of the mind what are the objective states of the mind from which point the stress originates and causes the suffering that is what is the 16th step so but why he has why the master put it as the 16th step why he did, he did not start from the first one the mind needs to be prepared the mind needs to be purified the intellect must be must have a clarity about the self and the non-self only then i can study these principles but why what is the goal to succeed in meditation to reach to the highest state of meditation but what is the result of the highest state of meditation it is awakening it is realization it is awakening and it is realization but how do i know that i have completed this step you know your mind may be asking this how should i know the doubts pertaining to the means of the knowledge is totally removed so what is going to happen say what is the doubt self and the non self i may talk i may have talked in the last couple of weeks in the months about ah these principles but still the doubt is there how do i know the doubt is there can you tell me one example last week how many times you were upset on a small thing <laughs> that is the proof that you have there is no clarity there is an extreme pain and still you know this pain belongs to the non self not to me not to me you have a clarity you have that level of awareness you have that conviction that conviction is not you know not uh, something like that we are uh, we have taken a sedative or uh, no it it happens with the right knowledge so the result of this shravan the doubts pertaining to the means of the knowledge is totally removed it took me years and years and one day it happened oh my oh this is what my master has been talking for so many years and he was so kind enough he never said to me that you did not learn no oh, today you learned something very good you learned something the means of the knowledge is what is known as that is known as the validation so the first means of the knowledge is the principles of the eastern wisdom what is the valid means of knowledge of law of gravitation newton's law of gravitation isn't it take an example that is how we understand electronics how do we understand by the principles of the physics so same way shravanam this step this step removes all the doubts pertaining to the knowledge so we have that body of the knowledge so the master also teaches oh you can study biology but what is the origin of birth in biology we say that uh, that we have the matter and there are complex uh, uh, all these matters uh, due to permutation and combination created a complex uh, uh, substance and that complex substance is known as protoplasm and the one unit of protoplasm is known as cell and the cell is contains that life but from where the life is coming 
so the eastern wisdom gives us starting from the human birth the world life through the principles explained by these masters and then it makes clear that what is the ultimate goal of the human life ultimate goal of the human life once we are clear ultimate goal of the human life every day you wake up in the morning and you you have that goal in your mind have you ever thought sergey what is the ultimate goal of human life he is thinking very seriously <laughs> after the what ultimate goal of human life i couldn't see that so now see the logical way that these masters are talking about they say that you should have at least i would say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 seven steps of listening what happens when you how you should listen and what the teacher teaches you once that went into my head and then for 26 years i would say after 5 or 6 or 7 years it was total attention on what the master is going to teach today because he is not teaching i have already told you the master is useless the words of a master is the most important that gives you the knowledge so you see that why we say useless we don't build a ego that i'm passing on the knowledge to and you are learning anyhow now let us pick up the little deeper by introducing the principle we ascertain what we ascertain and establish that this is the principle in my life will work logically so how the that listening this principle goes on in the second step the master teaches from beginning and the conclusion beginning and the conclusion take one example you start contemplating only on one principle self and the non self every day during all your thinking speaking and practice everything will happen you need not to worry about it but how to open that topic so by practice third step in the listening is we there is a repeated declaration of the principle then you also understand the uniqueness of this knowledge what is the uniqueness of this knowledge one is objective knowledge pertains to the science and this is purely a subjective knowledge science can complement science can complement this subjective reality but it cannot find out the subjective reality in india when i used to attend the medical conferences they say no there is how can you prove that there is a real self i said where is your protocol you have a protocol to discover corona vaccine you have a protocol for doing a research in the objective reality but what is your protocol to find out who am i there is no protocol so this knowledge is unique knowledge then what is the result of this knowledge so the teacher guides you through various means that what exactly is the result of the knowledge see that majority of us may not be able to understand Now the result of the knowledge is that now you awaken to the seer and the knower. So now go a little deeper down. 
No, it brings an end to all kinds of suffering. Now, go a little deeper. Oh, forget about it. How can you, uh, how can you bring an end to all kinds of suffering? I have a lot of challenges in my life, so the doubt comes. So Shravanam removes the doubt because it introduces different principles. Uh, then say, okay, anxiety management, okay. Just do the relaxation practice. Your anxiety will drop down. So, the, the understanding, the fruits of the Shravanam. But we do it by reasoning. If any teacher in our tradition, in my tradition says, believe me, better to leave that teacher. If he stops asking you, no, no, don't ask the question, you just do it and everything will happen. It is always good to leave the teacher with all the humility, find the other teacher. That is the way of this journey of Eastern Christ. Now see, it is the same principles discovered 6,000 years ago, and we have 3,000 masters, they explained it differently. They personalized it to the contemporary society. That is the beauty of this journey. In the ne next week, we are going to, after listening, a seeker, the work of a seeker starts. Your real work starts. You have heard the principle self and the non-self. You are living your life. My husband, my wife, my son, my daughter, they are all labels. Labels are not self. Should I expect love from them? No. Should I express in love and happiness to them? Yes. See the principle. Do you remember that? Just remember a single principle and the life will change. Your attitude will change. Your response will change. But you see, expectations from others, from the world, reduce the joy of living. So what is going to happen now? See the other part. That is why the listening is important. Again and again. So because expectation reduces the joy, you have already stopped expecting from others. Your expectation is to express love, peace and happiness in your relationship. So what is what you will get in return? Ask yourself. If you are expressing peace and happiness in your relationship, you start with the peace and happiness, the return will definitely be in peace and happiness. You see, understanding, at the same time your anxiety is gone because you have been expecting. Now that there is no expectation, huh? so joy is always there. Are you, are you getting it? Smaller, smaller principles of life. But that will not happen if you go deeper. I started with the cause, cause, cause. Not the effect. Ultimately going to the cause, root cause. And we say the root cause is the real self and that real self is made up of peace and happiness. Allow it to be expressed in life. So when you allow it to express in life, daily life, in your personal, professional and social life, then what happens? Let me practice meditation. The mind is not wandering. Mind wanders because of expectation. Are you clear? Then you will never complain, my mind has a lot of thoughts. It was difficult for me to control my thoughts during the practice of meditation. See that. 
See the outcome. Outcome. Result. Otherwise, we talk a lot. No, no, no. You Meditation cannot control my thought. We are not controlling the thought. We have, through the understanding, through the clarity, our motivation has changed. Our expectations has changed in life. And that leads you to the higher journey. Next week, there are four principles. We will see how to take this hearing to the next step by the four steps. So let us start our journey today. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. And stays one. Do you remember the stays when eyes are closed and body is steady? mind looking inside where you look inside you see that becomes very clear anywhere look inside the head is okay top of the head is okay inside the heart is okay don't create any cult and dogma and belief what is the goal the mind should move inside from outside and then I have tweaked one thing do you experience even a little calmness here and now? Yes. Let us continue. You did not create that calmness. It is already there. So how to get that continuity of the calmness? Just maintain awareness. How to know that you are in your house? Just be there and aware of it. Without doing anything. But the mind does something that breaks the continuity. That is why we have a journey of meditation, being comfortable. Let us settle at the physical level. Look at the neck joint. Huh? Do you remember the subtle principle? I'll recall it again. So you look at the neck joint, physical mind, physical organ. When you look at the neck joint, be there, feel and experience sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. What is this? This is the subtle mind is knowing this. What do you mean by the subtle mind? The mind is living within. Look at it. Yesterday I gave only one hour meditation practice only on this principle. Move the mind on the shoulder joints. You are there, mind is there means you feel sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. Move the mind on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes to all the joints experience sensation being comfortable and steadiness do you recall the next step sometime some of you who are becoming seeker the mind will instantly become aware oh what it means by being carefree that is our third step thoughts are coming and going let it come and go I'm indifferent I'm separate from it like the birds flying in the skies above, like the waves in an ocean, and calmness deeper within. It is the same water, it is the same mind. So how I am expressing the subtler the mind is, least affected by the physical turbulence <coughs> or the thoughts. You know, my regular understanding. We say, okay, let me do the practice once and I know now. And then you have a stress because you do not succeed in meditation. See? That is why the listening, being casual, being natural in life, here and now. Natural means you are in a state of doing nothing. Really in the state of doing nothing? 
and then we move to the stage two. We already know purification of the mind and removing the projections created by the mind. So looking deep inside the belly button and start breathing quick, short and gentle breath through both the nostrils into the belly. Playfully. Are you aware of the calmness? Is the calmness continuing? Wonderful. So the mind is aware of the calmness on one side and continue to do the short, quick breathing from both the nostrils into the belly. At the same time, you keep looking deep inside the heart or the space where you have experienced the state of calmness. It is such a beautiful journey. Continue. Stop it. Now we switch on to the deep, silent, slow breathing. Starting from inhale from the belly, then into the rib case, up to the throat, exhaling from the belly, from the rib case. Now see that you have already committed. You are in a state of steadiness, comfortable, carefree. In that state, the calmness continues and you are acting on the breath. Deep, silent, slow breath. So with that deep, silent and slow breath, we inhale, which is deep, silent and slow. We slip into the next step of humming and while breathing out start the humming sound louder, deeper, longer. So deeper and longer is a common factor in, in during inhalation and exhalation. Silent during inhalation, humming during exhalation, continue. Your next inhalation or the humming is deeper than the previous one. You pay attention to that and your mind will live with it. Simple. Humming sound, deeper, longer, louder. Do you remember another subtle point? That your vibration should be inside and around the forehead. If that is not there, you have to change the rate and the rhythm. We'll understand that part also.
Start this humming sound, continue with the deep, silent and slow breathing. Moving the mind while during inhalation from the crown of the head to the tailbone and from the tailbone to the crown of the head. So everything is set now. So during inhalation and exhalation, the mind is, during inhalation, the mind is dropping from the crown of the head to tailbone. You drop Om Shanti five times. And there is a catch in it. It's a beautiful way to remove the influx of thoughts. And during exhalation, the mind is rising from the tailbone to the crown of the head and drop again five times Om Shanti. So there is, you see Om Shanti, you experience the space. Om Shanti, space, Om Shanti, space, Om Shanti, space. stop saying the Om Shanti continue with that deep silent slow breathing moving into the stage 3 with Nyasa what we do in Nyasa as you inhale the mind moves with the breath inside the right arm from the shoulder to the fingertips where in the space and emptiness inside. When you exhale, the mind moves from the fingertips to the shoulder in the space. How do we understand it clearly? The emptiness inside is the highway. It is empty. Your breath is the car and the mind is the driver. So the mind with the car moving on a highway, that emptiness inside the right arm at present. Why we are doing this? To drop the identification with the body. However, Nyasa I use the word nyasa. Nyasa means purification from all around, from all sides. <coughs> what purification of the mind? What will happen? Mind will live within. What will happen if the mind lives within? Move the mind now inside the left arm in the same way the mind in the breath, mind is driving the breath inside the left arm in the space during inhalation and exhalation. So what will happen? That mind will reflect our true nature. I appreciate you all.
beautiful. Your uh, outer manifestation of the now move the mind inside the right leg. It just self-absorption is there but it does not mean that you have forgotten yourself you are fully aware continue doing the nyasa on the right leg my friends Now moving inside the left leg. We are in a stage three. You'll be surprised this is the step nine. Now moving the mind inside the spine from the top of the head to the toes. When you inhale and when you exhale. the stays for leave the step just looking inside the head or the heart any thought any feeling any experience enters superimpose om shanti what is this i think you are hundred percent clear now and let me repeat it again. I come to your house and you ask me, who are you? I say, Om Shanti. What you do, Om Shanti? Where are you going, Om Shanti? Why you have come, Om Shanti? Which car you drive? For every question, you have, I have only one answer, Om Shanti. What will happen to your mind? Your mind will say, I'm not talking to you. It will be on the back foot. It will step back. Same thing we should apply. Any thought, any feeling, any experience, Aum Shanti. 
just drop it gently with care with love stays for you casually naturally should I explain with an example you are going for a morning walk you are moving casually you see the beautiful scene in the mountains you did not think of it same thing happens in this step. A revolution takes place. So what you normally just looking casually inside the crown of the head, gently dropping home in that space, walking inside the forehead, dropping home. Further down inside the heart, Om to the belly button, Om, and after you allow the mind to rise up from the belly button to the jaw. You can stay anywhere you like, you will have beautiful experiences. Going down is a descending process. Descending. You have heard the word descendants. Angels. Everything is within us. And when the mind rises, it is known as ascending. And when the mind rises without any obstacle in between it helps to descend that is what is also known as a grace and the blessing
just here. We move to the stage number six. Just looking at the breath going in and out, feeling the sensation, second point of awareness, and the third, no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. breath. First point of awareness, you're looking at the breath casually. <clears throat> looking means awareness. Looking, feeling the sensation of the breath, this is also awareness, and no change in the rate in the rhythm of the breath. That is also an aware, three-pointed awareness of the breath. Why, at a very subtler level, we are preventing the mind to pick up anything from the objective world, at the same time to experience the deeper state. And the experience as if we are doing nothing. It is the state of doing nothing. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. Sometimes you feel it is difficult to lift, and it's a wonderful experience. We need not to worry about it. Raise both your palms, place it on your closed eyes, open the eyes inside. Bring the hands down. We have two more things to go, sharing our experiences and question and answer. How are you, Jordan? I'm good. Uh, it was really peaceful and quiet and um, good for me today, so I enjoyed it. Yeah, very good. But you have to learn how to live into the same state, talking, walking, working, twenty-four by seven, and you are at the right age to the. How are you, Tatiana? You referred Sergi. 
and Daniel, they are coming regularly. I know you are busy. How are you? Um, I feel lost because I lost myself a couple of times or even more. And finally, at the last home, I found myself back. You're myself back. Yeah, we are lost in deep sleep also. And in mm -hmm. waking up, we come back. <laughs> you know, Guruji, that's, that was not sleep. Uh, I cannot explain. Just uh, I lost the body. Good. And lose the sauce. Look, I lost the sauce. Oh, very good. Very good. Lo losing the thought means transcending the body. Losing the thought means purified mm -hmm. state of the mind. But you have to live into that state 24 by 7. <laughs> How are you, Stephen? <laughs> Uh, really, really good. Um, a, a completely different, different experience for me on this one. Um, I, 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 there was no thoughts. Beauty. Everything was just focused from start to finish on the entire meditation, and I experienced different things throughout the meditation because, in my own mind, I was set on not focusing on anything that was actually happening. And therefore, it was, uh, I saw red, I saw orange, I saw, actually I saw all the colors except for green. Oh, except um, At least green. I think that was the case. I've had temperature changes. The first half of the meditation, I was in a deep sweat. The second half of the meditation, I was actually freezing. So <laughs> it, it was just this this whole mixture of it. And I just, I, I, I experienced it, let it go, and it was one right after the other. Um, it, it was it was very different. So it's a very relaxing, very peaceful. Peaceful. It's a beautiful. Be sure you are undergoing a mental transformation because of these variety of experiences, and it is such beautiful thing to note. It's your commitment. I don't come into picture. Oh, there, was one, there was one other thing that, that I felt that I experienced that was different is, is that when we you know, always focus from the, the tailbone to the, to the top of the head, um, I felt an expansion at the top of the head that it wasn't here anymore. The top of the head was top of the head. up here. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I did not cover that principle. One master says that we have we have a zone of silence and peace three inches above the forehead. That is always present. So why I don't talk of these things? First, you should have an experience. Otherwise, people may have a kind of imagination. Yeah, that is why this today's step is very important to understand the principle. Wonderful, Stephen. I appreciate. How are you, David and Jerry? I, um, for me as well, a different experience. My uh, temperature during the humming got very, very high. And then when we went into the next stage, I believe it was called Vanasana, and started breathing through the limbs. I realized how much I was holding on and all of a sudden my my temperature dropped and my, like my shoulders dropped and I just sort of started letting go, my thoughts let it go and the rest of the meditation was just very much about letting go. Wow, again, um, beautiful. It was very, very interesting experience. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you wanted to say something again. David? Oh, no, I just said that. I love the message as well. Sorry. So you see that, you know, moving, doing, moving the mind inside the limbs also helps you to drop the very binding nature of the mind that keeps us identifying with the body, that I am the body, I am the body. The moment you loosen that, it happens deeper inside. There is a beautiful experience. That is what you have done. It's a beautiful to see. And how are you, Jerry? 
I'm doing well, thank you. It was um, it was very focused, relaxed, and during the oming from the crown to the heart to the stomach, that I loved how you told, kind of just said, take a walk. Take a walk, yes. And, and just see what, what you experience. And for me, that was um, uh, just yeah. very expansive. And yeah. again, above the crown, like Stephen experienced as well. Yeah, yeah, that is also one of the most beautiful step. You see that descending means the blessing and the grace. So the blessing and the grace happens naturally naturally so because your mind goes back again to it and you have an expensive feeling that is definitely a deeper state beautiful how are you daniel uh, so for me that was a very very quiet meditation and i was very calm i think that was probably the, the quietest meditation i, I could ever see had. your face yes <laughs> yeah so and uh, I have to say that I like it, and that was also a little bit strange feeling that I was kind of happy without a significant reason, like, like just... There is no reason, happy. I'm happy. Yes, exactly, so there was no reason that I really like this, this <laughs> calmness and, and just doing nothing. That is what I have been saying. You see the principle, happiness is my essential nature. You got a taste of it. So you have got a taste of it means that you have to live into that state 24 by 7. How are you, Sergi? <laughs> Thanks, Sergi, uh, who introduced you to me. Daniel, I'm saying it. Excuse me, say it again. Now I'm saying, Daniel, that you introduced me to Daniel. So you, Daniel, have to say thank you to Sergey. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I found today it was not easy uh, because of like minds sort of coming and go, and I feel like. I'm constantly fighting with that, with it, with them, and I'm like splitting myself in between. Like I'm not my thoughts. I know that they're coming. I know that they're constantly judging Beautiful or playing for my mind, but I'm not that thoughts, and that's not easy. Like I understand that one. I understand how that works, <laughs> but it's still in time memory. Is that how it works? <laughs> I, is that like, uh, like it's something like somebody is like constantly yeah, shocked. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. Okay, okay, I know, I know. Like, okay, not now. Like, I understand. I understand. Like, could you please? Like, yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, and in one moment, I <sighs> like I see that like snow goes, like just like uh, snowflakes going, and I feel relax, and I just relax. Yes, it is. Consistent and persistent practice helps. But you see that what is the cause of this principle that I'm not the thought? It comes from, in the beginning I talked about it, viveka, discernment, separating, knowing. And after knowing, you live into that. Oh, there's a noise of the fan. Am I the noise of the fan? No. It is striking my ears, but is ear me? No, I'm not the ear. So how can I have a thought? So, you know, your thought process is thought kills the rest of the thoughts. So you're doing great. That is the, also the right way. Because everyone, you know, follows its own way. And that is also the right way. My master used to say that you are walking in the words and the thorn pierces into your toe. What you do? You take another thorn or you take another needle to bring that thorn out of your toe to remove 
a thorn, you need a needle. You don't need a scissor. So to remove the thought, let us have another thought. No, this thought is not me. No, this is separate from me. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to give you one so that the next uh, week practice will be better. You see that? Open your mouth, put your hand on the belly, uh, the middle of the palm, right hand or left hand, whatever it is. Ah, you can say it. Ah, change the rhythm of the ah in the pitch so that you start feeling the vibration inside the belly button. Uh, and if that not happens, that is because of the impurity of the mind. Now, put your hand on the center of the rib case. Oh, oh, oh. making the mouth like a crow's beak. Oh, do you feel the vibration? Now put your hand on the forehead, lips together. Do it a couple of times. Do you feel that? So when we do the humming sound, we must have the vibration here. That means we are doing right. And what is the secret of the three vibrations, three sound? O, U, Ma, three syllables. They join together, what they make? Um. So when we chant Om, it should start from the belly, it should go into the heart, it should reach to the Why? All the three powers of the mind merges and they takes you on the top of the head. You reach to the ultimate. Now any question you have? No, but you both have to thank Ta Tanya. She has introduced. I'm sorry, you know, I forgot that. Tanya, keep on introducing others. Thank you. <laughs> Tanya, you have to unmute to talk. Tanya is beautiful. She is English teacher in Ukraine. Tanya, unmute if you want to say something. Unmute. Hey, yeah, yeah, now I say sorry, I forgot that uh, the time. So my name is Tanya. I'm uh, 